this is lesson 1-5 on scatter plots. A scatter plot is a graph that relates data of two different sets. The two sets of data are displayed as ordered pairs. Most of the time, a scatter plot only uses quadrant one of your, of your graph, so therefore, you will just need something like that. You should always label your axes if you're making a scatter plot so people know in the world you're talking about. Now, a scatter plot is not like a line graph where it's neat and tidy. A scatter plot has data all over it. For example, if this was the temperature and this was the time of day, we could have data all over the place depending upon what was happening with the weather. So a scatter plot basically just has data on it. I sometimes look at, tell, tell some people it kind of looks like somebody had fun playing all over the paper with a bunch of dots on, on the paper. When you work with a scatter plot, you can have three different types of correlation. You can have a positive correlation, which says as one set of data increases, so does the other set of data. For example, a positive correlation will look something like this. Okay. As one thing goes up, as this increases this way, this increases this way. An example of a positive correlation is the more magazine subscriptions I sell, the more money I earn. As magazine subscriptions go up on the x-axis, money earned goes up on the y-axis. It's considered to be a positive correlation. A negative correlation says as one set of data increases, the other decreases. An example of a negative correlation would look something like this. As one set of data increases, the other set of data decreases. A good example is the more miles I drive, the less gas is in my tank. Or the more miles I drive, the less miles it takes to get to my destination. So it's a negative correlation. The last type of correlation is no correlation. That means there is no relationship between the data whatsoever. Essentially, your graph kind of looks like this. I tell people it looks like someone sneezed on the page. Because as one set of data goes up, you can't tell if the other set of data goes up or down. A trend line shows a correlation more clearly. It shows somebody what is happening with your data. For example, if I was to have a correlation here, and if I was to do something like this, I can draw a trend line through this data. When you draw a trend line, as much as possible, you like to have the same number of points above and below your trend line. Now, it doesn't always work perfectly that way, but it's always helpful if you can have approximately the same number of points above and below, or the same number of points above and below and some points on. In this particular graph, it's going to be impossible to put any points on the trend line, but there will be there's an obvious line that goes between these two sets of data points like that. We have approximately the same number of points above and below. By drawing the trend line in, we can make a prediction later about what we think is going to happen based upon the trend. As we see this going up, we can pick a point way out here match it with our trend line and make a prediction of what was going to happen. Now, with scatter plots, you need to be able to determine if something is a positive or negative or no correlation whatsoever. Let's take a look at a couple examples. Number one, the number of newspapers you sell and the amount of money you make. Well, let's see here. If I sell more newspapers, I'm probably going to make more money. As one set of data is increasing, the next set of data is increasing, so this is obviously a positive correlation. Let's look at an example number two. A person's age and the number of pets he has. Well, I'm fairly old and ancient and archaic, 47. I have two pets. My daughters are fairly young. They also have two pets. They live in the same house that I do. So therefore, age really has nothing to do with the number of pets you have. Obviously, if you're older, you have a higher chance of getting a pet, but I know lots of people who have infants in their house, and they have five to six pets. Therefore, a person's age and the number of pets they have have no correlation whatsoever. An 
example number three, the number of times you brush your teeth and the number of cavities you have. Well, typically, the more you brush your teeth, the less bacteria you have on your teeth, and therefore, the less cavities you should have. So as number of brushings goes up, number of cavities should go down as a general trend. So this would be considered to be a negative correlation. Don't get stuck with the thought that negative means bad, because in this case, negative does not mean bad. Getting less cavities is actually good. It just means that as one value is going up, the other value is going down. 